Andy, as you can see from that footage, particularly the, the still there at the end, because it all happened so quickly, the victim there may have been 15, but they had a knife and they were about to stab another young woman with it. Surely the police had no choice but to shoot. Yeah, so the race beaters in Ohio immediately were trying to turn this into a race issue. And they also brought in gender because it's very rare that a black woman is actually killed uh, by mm. police. Um, however, uh, I, I think it's great that the Columbus police released the body camera footage very quickly because as we see, yeah. this um, teenager unfortunately was armed with a knife and hostile. And if the officer didn't fire, the other teen girl in pink may possibly be dead. The killing of 16-year-old Michaela Bryant by the Columbus police is tragic. She was a child. We're thinking of her friends and family and the communities that are hurting and grieving her loss. We know that police violence disproportionately impacts uh, black and Latino people and communities and that black women and girls, like black men and boys, experience higher rates of police violence. We also know that, so our focus is on um, working to address systemic racism and implicit, implicit bias head on, and of course to passing laws and legislation that will put much needed reforms into place at police departments around. Now, there's no evidence this had anything to do with racism. That was an officer trying to make sure that one girl didn't kill another girl. Uh, in a civil society, you're not allowed to stab other people with knives. So the officer did what they thought they had to do. Again, we can always talk about training and whatever. I heard a lot of people saying, well, she should have used a taser. I mean, a taser doesn't always work. It's a little harder to aim. Though she maybe still could have stabbed her. But we can have all of those discussions. But they don't really want to have those discussions because that they want to have is discussions about systemic racism and how to burn the whole system down. In 2019, and this is according to the Washington Post, this isn't some crazy right-wing rag, the Washington Post, which analyzed the data, 2019, nine unarmed black people were shot by cops, 19 unarmed white people were shot by cops. That's more than double in case you're using math. There's systemic racism that's a stain on our nation's soul. The guilty verdict does not bring back George. But through the family's pain, they're finding purpose. So George, George's legacy will not be just about his death, but about what we must do in his memory. The Biden administration and President Biden has definitely exceeded expectations that progressives had. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice, for being there to call out to your mom. How, how heartbreaking was that? Call out for your mom. I can't breathe. But because of you and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice first 100 days, um, or almost 100 days, uh, has been very impressive. Prior to the verdict, we saw some extraordinary comments from Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters encouraging protesters to get more confrontational in the event of a non-conviction. And sensationally, the judge overseeing the case said those comments could be grounds for an appeal. What's the latest on that? And was there a measure of political interference in this trial? So you're talking about Maxine Waters. She's been a politician in Congress for decades now. And going back to the early 90s, she has repeatedly weighed in and, in my view, incited racial violence. Uh, in, the, in the early 90s, she expressed praise, essentially, for the race riots in Los Angeles. Uh, a couple years ago, she called for the public to mob those who worked in the Trump administration while they're dining out with mm. their families or getting petrol. So, and she's never faced sunshine for any of that. And she probably won't for this time either. She called for uh, confrontations to escalate. So, uh, yeah, in America, you can be, uh, you can incite violence as long as you're on the left, you'll get away with it. Yes, I would like to see the bill in Congress pass on police reform, but I know that the right wing, the racists are opposed to it, and I don't know what's going to happen to it, but I know this, we've got to stay in the street, and we've got to, we've got to demand justice. As a black man, despite all of the efforts, I feel like nothing changes, and George Floyd is waking so many people up, 
yet nothing has happened just you know despite the rhetoric like what what needs to happen that's different this year well, than all the years we're before we're looking for a guilty verdict we're looking for a guilty verdict and we're looking to see if all of the talk that took place and has been taking place after they saw what happened to George Floyd, if nothing does not happen, then we know uh, that we've got to not only stay in the street, but we've got to fight for justice. But I am very hopeful and I hope uh, that we're going to get a uh, verdict that they say guilty, guilty, guilty. And if we don't, we, got, we cannot go away. And not just manslaughter, right? I mean... Oh, no, not manslaughter. No, no, no. This is, this is guilty for murder. I don't know whether it's in the first degree, but as far as I'm concerned, it's first degree. It's coming from what happens if we do not get, get what you just told? What should the people do? What should protesters on the street do? I didn't hear you. What happens... What should protesters do? Well, we, we got to stay on the street. Uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, they know that we need business. If George Floyd's murderer is not sentenced, just know that all hell is going to break loose. Don't be surprised when buildings are on fire. Just saying. If somebody decides to loot a Gucci or a Macy's or a Nike, because that makes sure that that person eats. That makes sure that that person has clothes. That's reparations. That is reparations. Anything they want to take, take it because these businesses have insurance. They're going to get their money back. My people aren't getting anything. But on Twitter, Reverend Jesse Jackson called the looting humiliating, embarrassing, and morally wrong. Jesse Jackson has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. Jesse Jackson was not there for the creation of Black Lives Matter. Jesse Jackson can keep his opinions to himself. for Americans to see this as the president saying he hopes the officers are going to be found guilty and the evidence is overwhelming. When people see that quote, is it wrong for them to make that assumption that that's what the president's saying? I think what people should conclude is that the president, like many Americans, uh, has been deeply impacted by the trial. He's been deeply impacted by, he was deeply impacted by his conversation with the Floyd family yesterday, that he understands that people are exhausted, that they are tired, that uh, this type of uh, violence and trauma we've seen around the country and continue to see over the past couple of weeks. What the verdict might be, I wonder if you could speak a little bit to Americans who feel on edge, especially African Americans who've seen so many verdicts, so many trials happen, no matter whatever the outcome is. I wonder if the White House has a message for people just feeling anxious about what comes after this verdict. You know, the president um, sees their pain and understands or and tries to understand uh, the trauma uh, that people have been through uh, across the country. And he's watching the trial closely. And I think he would want people to know that um, he is working hard at making change possible. And I, can, I walk through some of the steps that has been taken by his Department of Justice. He would love to sign uh, the George Floyd bill. I wonder why the White House isn't also coming to the defense of Representative Waters, given the fact that she's now facing an onslaught of attacks, especially by, I would say, Republicans. I wonder why the White House isn't saying, we, we back what she said about being confrontational. She was obviously not threatening violence. She also clarified her own remarks. We've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they they know that we need business. The police uh, all over this country have got to be changed. 
Policing has got to be changed. We've got to redefine what policing is all about. We've got to reimagine how we can deal with the problems of our society without young people and people of color in particular getting killed by police that we pay to protect and serve us. You look there. Now you can see. Now you can see. Y'all be twisting up the story. You want to talk to me? Do you want to talk to me? Okay, cool. Don't take my mic, but we're cool. Okay. What is your what's your name? What's my name? My name is my name. All right. So tell me what you think about what's going on. What I think about this is all the press and all the extra shit y'all do makes this worse. You think so? Yes. When people want to protest, they shouldn't do it in front of a fucking police this Yeah. Courthouse. Shit like that. You get what the fuck I'm saying? I want you to be careful. I want you to be careful. I really of what? do. Of anything that can of hit what? you. Of anything that can hit you. Look at of all the stuff. Of, of this. Of what? Of this. Do it look like I'm scared? No, you don't. Do it you look don't. like I'm scared? You don't. You don't. Exactly. Y'all need to get up out of here with all that twisting up the media ass shit. Okay. Real shit. You don't know me, but we I don't know get, you. we're going to get to know each other. That's You're what gonna we're going to gonna get to know do. each other. Yes, huh? we are. Let's we see. are. We are. How are you gonna know me? I'm gonna. We're gonna talk. I'm gonna share yeah, a number with you. All right, let's do it. No, let's do it right let's here. Let's do it. All right, here's my here's my phone. Let's no, go ahead and share me out, Talk about something that's real. Tell me what's y'all real. Y'all just gonna edit out the shit. That we're live. Want, we and are live. And then y'all gonna listen, edit out some listen, other shit. We're live. Right you're now. not fucking live. I'm live right now. I don't care if you live or not. Okay. But Get away from here with all that media shit that y'all doing right now. Look, we're with CNN. Then we're take live. that camera all the way the fuck up there. Then. We are going up there. That's take it all the way the fuck up there. Us. Y'all doing all the extra shit for the backhand shit to make Listen, people look all crazier than what the fuck up they there. are. All right, then you watch us because that's where we're going. There. All right, so everybody's got a hot head right now, as you might imagine, because <laughs> it is really, really hot right now. The crowd was. Fuck out of New York. We don't want you here. We don't want you here. We don't want you here. We don't want your fucking money. We don't want your fucking money. We don't want your fucking taqueria. Owned by fucking white men. Tip 30%. Tip 30%. Yeah, well, I've been here uh, all four nights. Uh, I'm just standing here today with uh, soup for my family, and uh, we're just, you know, watching all of this unfold. It's very unfortunate. You're not planning on using that, are you, throwing yes. it at the police? Like I said, it's for my family. It's literally for your family. Yeah. All right. And then when they get caught, they say, no, this is soup for my family. They're so innocent. This is soup for my family. Uh, it's incredible. So, no. This verdict is not justice. Frankly, I don't even think we call it full accountability because there are multiple officers that were there. It wasn't just just Derek Chauvin. And I also don't want this moment to be framed as this system working, working, because it's not working. You said Black Lives Matter. I I've worked here part time. Plus, I'm a part owner of this store. You said Black Lives Matter. Why don't you choke me? I'm black. Tell them, sister. Look what you did to my store. Tell them, sister. Look, we've been here all night cleaning up. All night cleaning. And you got black people now, standing right here with them. Black tell people. me right. Black Lives Matter. Exactly. You lied. She has described herself as a trained Marxist. We uh, are trained Marxists. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you here. She's a communist through and through, and she's been unbelievably unapologetic in her approach. And the head of Black Lives Matter in New York is calling for an investigation into where the money went. Colors recently purchased a $1.4 million home in Topanga Canyon, California. Estimated percentage of black population, 0.4%. I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. I will see you next time. Even though I'm regarded as pessimistic, uh, I was never pessimistic enough to think that things would degenerate to the point where they are now. 
where adult human beings are talking about getting rid of the police, where they're talking about reducing the number of police, reducing the uh, resources put into police work. I never dreamed we'd come to this point. It just seems such utter madness. And, and what is frightening is how many people in, in, in responsible positions are caving in to every demand that is made, uh, repeating any kind of nonsense that you're supposed to repeat. Uh, I do believe that we may well be, we may well reach a point of no return. I hope that, of course, that will never happen. But there is such a thing as a mm -hmm. point of no return. Uh, the Roman Empire uh, overcame many uh, problems in its long history, but eventually it reached a point where it simply could no longer uh, continue on. And much of that was, was from within, not just the barbarians attacking from outside. Systemic oppression, you hear it uh, on our college campuses, you hear it from very wealthy and fabulously famous sports stars, you hear it from media types, you hear it. First of all, what does that mean? And whatever it means, is it true? It really has no meaning that can be specified and tested in the way that one tests hypotheses. Uh, it does remind me of the propaganda uh, tactics of Joseph Goebbels during the age of the Nazis, uh, in which he's supposed to have said that people will believe any lie if it's repeated long enough and loud enough. But the thing about the BLM movement is this, that everything that they've been doing for the last several months, if not several years, has been working. They've been given a pass to lawlessness. They have our own vice president uh, tweeting out contributions for the bail effort to get some of these individuals out of jail and to pay for their, their process. So they've been given this giant pass and they're going to run with it. You know, this organization, as violent and destructive and disgusting as it may be, they are smart people that are running it. Obviously, we know that they are enriching their se themselves, but just beyond that, that, they know that they've got our democratic leaders. They know that they've got the media. They know that they've got a lot of companies, social media, and pop culture on their side. So they're running an intimidation campaign. If you don't fall in line with BLM, if you don't co-sign and endorse everything that BLM does, you are deemed a racist and you will be canceled. So they're going to continue on this charade, and that's why they've been so emboldened. That's why you're seeing them getting more and more violent. Sí, ya sé, ya sé lo que algunas personas van a decir.